You, uh, you speak English? You're from the Ute Nation, ain't you? You got a real bad banged up leg there. You ought to let me take a look at it. It might even be broke. If it was, I could fix it for you. Now, I ain't gonna hurt you. But I don't want you hurting me neither, see? Burn it, Buster. I'm gonna help you whether you like it or not. That knife ain't gonna do you a whole lot of good, but I'm gonna take that away from you. but yourself. I'm going to take a look at that leg now. I didn't like having to do that, buddy, but there ain't no other way. You ain't gonna get no better mood. Promise at least 200 by next week. We gotta deliver. I tell you, if Hoss doesn't catch out of that herd pretty soon, I don't know what to do. Hey, what? Found him out by Cooper's Creek. Got a busted leg in pretty bad shape. What well, you got him tied up for? Uh, that's exactly the reason he ain't altogether happy of this situation. Well, what is he, half mean or half hungry? I don't know. I mean, it's a little of both, Joe. Looked like he'd been out there three or four days to me. Joe, nope. you better bring Doc Hadley out of here. Right, Pop. You understand English? Hey, take it easy. You'll be all right. Ute. Yeah, I know he's a Ute. Wonder what he's doing out here. The Ute abandoned their wounded. They live like packs of wolves. They are savage animals. 
All right, Martinez. You talk the language, don't you? See. Si. Let's get him inside. And see what you can find out. Take it easy. Bring tired him plumb out. For all the gratitude he's showing, you'd think I brought a wildcat home instead of a human being, wouldn't you? Oh, he's much worse than a wildcat, senor. The youth has been taught to hate the white man from childhood. And this one, he has learned his lesson well. Here is food, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, good. Thank you, Hop Thing. Mm-mm. Looks scrumptious, do it? This is good. He will not eat it, senor. Why? He ought to be starving. The youths feed their prisoners food soaked in alkali. It amuses them to see them rolling on the ground. Screaming in agony. Well, Martinez, you stay here with him. See if you can find out what his name is and all about him. Uh -huh. Be back at twelve. Hello, Hans. Oh, hi, Doc. How's the patient? Well, apparently all right. He ate all that meal, and he's in there with Martinez now. Uh-huh. Better see him. He's in there. Senor. Well, Martinez? His name is Tatu. He's the son of a youth war chief. And he has his father's poison in his veins. Would you tell him that... Uh... We just want to be his friends. I did, senor. Well, what did he say? <laughs> he said he will cut the throats of all white beasts, especially your senor, because you are the one who threw away his chinuda. His what? A chinuda is a metal shaped like a bird. To a youth, it is a protection against evil. Oh, so that's what that was in his hand. I didn't know it's all very important to him. Oh, he's a great honor given only to the best hunters. To die without it is a great shame. Hmm? Well, you better stick close, Martinez. We may have to explain a couple of things. You do not need me, senor. He understands your tongue. Well, why didn't he say so? I told you, senor Ben. He is a youth, and he cannot be trusted. All right. Go on back to the corral, Martinez. We'll, uh, we'll tend to. Thank you. At least the leg's not broken. Oh, sorry about that, Doc. Yeah, that's all right. I've handled worse. I once fixed the leg of a mule. Hoss, administer the anesthetic. Where is it in your bag? Hoss, administer the anesthetic. <coughs> oh, that anesthetic. Oh. Well, buddy, I hate to do this to you again, but you don't leave me much choice. Thank you, gentlemen. I won't need any further assistance. Paul, that metal Martinez is telling us about. You think it'd do any good if I rode out there and could find it and bring it back to him? Well, I don't know if it'd help any. If you wouldn't make anything any worse. I think I'll do that. See you at one.
saying? Is supper ready? <laughs> On stove, Mr. Cartwright. I'm getting it right away. Well, I can't find those receipts anyway. Well, they should be in that second drawer, Joe. Well, don't worry about it now. Supper's about to be served. A horse isn't gonna like missing supper one bit. <laughs> I think he's got enough in reserve to tide him over. <laughs> I'm saying, looks delicious as usual. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, thanks, Pa. It's the first time in months I haven't had to fight for my supper. <laughs> you managed to survive. Pass me the bread. Hey, what in tar... Doggone it. A tattoo, I'm getting sick and tired of your peculiar ways of saying thanks. We're just trying to help you, boy, doggone it, but you're making it awful tough. Yeah, we're just trying to be friends, boy. But we don't want to hurt you. Doggone it. I went to a whole lot of trouble to get this for you today. I brought your medal. If you're convinced you're going to kill me, I'm going to give you a chance, because I'm coming up there. Boss. Somebody gets hurt. Come on. You ain't got nothing to be afraid of now. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Give me the pistol. Hoss, very brave. Tattoo just happened to be a lousy shot, for which I'm very happy. Uh -huh. yeah, pretty fair job. All the soil is gone, anyhow. Yeah. All right, let's see how it stands up. Try it, Tattoo. Tattoo stand? Of course, of course. Sure. Stand up and walk. Tattoo cannot walk. Well, of course you can. Why, son, those muscles you tore loose, they're all well now. Come on, come on. Doctor, you are good medicine man. You take fire for my leg, but you cannot heal leg. That is why my chiefs leave me in mountain, because I, I cannot hunt, I cannot run, not ride. Tattoo. Your chiefs are wrong. Chiefs never wrong. Oh, well, you'll have to convince him. I've got at least a dozen other patients to take care of. Good thank, luck. Thank you, Doc. Now, look here, Tatu. The leg is well. I did not seek to come here. I was to die. You say you are my friend, but you shame me. Shame you? Now, why'd I want to do a thing like that? They take my horse and say, Tatu, son of Awatek, must wait for the great darkness to come. Alone, I wait till the sun travels down. But the great darkness does not come. And I wait. The wind is cold, and my leg screams. 
three times the sun crossed the sky. I have no water, no food. The great darkness comes with the rising of the fourth sun. The pain is gone, and I sleep. And I run with the wind to kill the buffalo. In my eyes, I see the gentle ways of my mother. And then you find me and bring back the pain. Now you shame me because I cannot walk. Now, Tatu, that ain't so. I ain't shamed you and that leg is healed. Hoss lies. I cannot walk. All right, so you can't walk. If you can't walk, you can't hunt, can you? So you won't be needing this anymore. Hey, look, you stubborn coyote, you're walking. Us? I am still Hunter. You bet you are. You care for lemon or cream, Miss Julie? <laughs> Very good. Excellent. Now remember, you serve Mrs. Planner first, then Julie. I get it. First old lady and then young one. Right. And, and use a good china. We gotta convince Mrs. Planner we're fancy enough for me to take her daughter out. Yes, sir. Okay, let's go through it one more. My, oh, my, oh, my. Ain't we getting fancy? What are you and Hopsine gonna be doing next, dancing a minuet? A little gal must really be something to turn you into a regular parlor room Romeo like this, Joe. Mm. I, I thought you were out in the barn fixing the stalls. Yeah, I, uh, I thought you was out chasing them wild horses. Well, it's, that's what I'm fixing to do right now. I'm gonna go round them up right now. Why don't you get the stalls fixed? I may bring back a whole herd. And you uh, plan on inviting them for tea? Why do you tear boards down, then put boards up? <laughs> I reckon a lot of things we do look sort of silly to you, don't they? Yes, but many of your ways are good. You know, I reckon we could probably learn something from your people, too. It is possible, but... But what? Do white men leave their brothers to die like my chiefs did to me? Well, I'll tell you, Tatu, there's lots of different kind of white men. But I reckon most of us do whole life sacred, yeah. That is good. Tell me something. Where'd you learn to speak English so good, anyhow? My father was a scout for the white soldier. He said they were the savages. They hunted my people and killed old men, women, children. That is why he turned away from them. Hey, my brother. Have any luck? Not a sign of them. I don't know, that old herd just seems to have disappeared in thin air. We need 30 more head by the end of the week. I just don't think we can deliver. Uh, oh, well, I'll tell you what, you, you don't need to worry about them horses anyway. You got something serious to worry about. Oh, yeah? What's that? Like how to pour tea for that little gal and her mama. Hey, they're not here already, are they? I better get in there to hop sing and get them to rehearse again. Hey, Joe. Joe, you might make use of that tub, too. Tub? Yeah. What is a tub? A tub? Well, sir, a tub is one of the great benefits of civilization. As a matter of fact, you could make use of one yourself right now. Hey, Bill, take care of the horse, will you? Come on. You go ahead and get undressed, and I'll get you a towel. Tattoo, this water is for you, not for the clothes. For Tattoo? Sure. Hot water for cooking. 
and also to kill bugs. Yeah, well, you're sort of getting the idea. <laughs> Hoss, you up there? Yeah, be right down, Pa. Look, you go ahead and get in there and take you a good bath. It ain't gonna kill you, I promise you. I've done it once or twice myself. Probably be needing this. As soon as you get through, come on downstairs. We got some company. No, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. Yes, thank you. I'm sure that things are, are much more informal here in the West. I still insist on meeting the families of the young men that my daughter Julie knows. Well, I think you're very wise. And I must say that I think that Joseph has a very, very nice family. Well, thank you. Oh, my other son, Hoss. Hoss, uh, this is Mrs. Flanner and her daughter Julie. How do you do? Happy to meet you, ma'am. You too, Julie. Thank you. Hope you'll pardon my appearance, but I put in a pretty hard day's work. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with honest toil, Mr. Cartwright. No, ma'am, and it does something for my appetite, too. Mm. Yeah, would you care for a little more tea, Mrs. Flatter? No. Oh, oh, no, no, thank you. Not too all clean, Hoss. Get out of here. Hoss said I should come. <laughs> Get him upstairs. Get him. Please leave me. Oh, come on, Tonto. You didn't mean no harm. You didn't know no better, that's all. Besides, I, I thought it was kind of funny. You ought to have seen the expression on that old lady's face. <laughs> Everyone would laugh at Tonto, like Hoss. Look, I've been laughed at myself a few times. Don't take yourself so seriously. Little Joe will hate Tonto. He won't do no such a thing. I'll tell you what. They're busting out some horses down there in the lower corral right now. You come on with me and I'll show you how much he hates you. Come on. That's one very strong horse, senor. Yeah, he's a tough one, all right. You think you can break them by tomorrow? We're 20 heads short. We could sure use them. Not tomorrow, senor. Today. I'll give them a try. Yeah, we better get back to work, too. I don't want to see this for nothing. Tattoo, hardly recognize you with your clothes on. Hey, little Joe, I want to tell you how... Uh, forget it. Just forget it. What's happened's happened. Don't worry. Julie and I will get back together. Are you sure? Well, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to worry about it, and I don't want you to either. 
If I were Diablo. Yeah, like I said, it's a tough animal. Well, I try him again tomorrow. Uh, let me try. Oh, Tatu, you've already had one accident. Please. This is man's work. Tatu, try. Go ahead. Let him try. All right, go ahead. Be careful. Go get him. Joe, let's go. See you right, Pa. Take it easy. Don't lean on that fence too hard, Joe. I have seen the Indian who could tame the wild animal, as if putting a spell on it. while this is. Well, he was... he was ready to go back. That's all there's to it. Yeah, I, I reckon so. But there for a while, I thought he really wanted to learn, you know? It must be very difficult to break the habits and instincts of a lifetime. Yeah, I reckon so. Mr. Cartwright! Mr. Cartwright! You won't believe it. You right. just won't believe it. All right, just take it easy now. Believe what? Tattoo. He just right in. And he bring a whole herd of horse with him. Hey, careful! Careful! No seats in that section! Uh, what do you think of that, Bob? Man, look at all those pretty horses. Are these enough for your contract? Enough? Oh, <laughs> Tattoo. <laughs> but, Tattoo, how'd you get that many all by yourself? This says I am best hunter. Tattoo knows this is lead stallion. Herd would fall. Oh, sure did. Well, now I can fill that contract. You boys got your work cut out for you. <laughs> Looks like it. <laughs> get going. <laughs> Tattoo, he must be pretty hungry. Hop Singh, what about it? Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> it was I, the Indian, the savage, the wolf who found the herd. They call you a wolf? Huh. I should have called you a fool. Or a traitor to your own breed. Traitor? You call Tatu a traitor? A fool? Those horses that you brought in so proudly, huh? You know where they're going? They're going to the forts, to the army, to the long swords, to the enemies of your people. Liar. Liar! Liar? 
Well, why don't you ask the Senor's Cartwright, huh? Well. <laughs> Proud hunter. Hey. How's it feel to put new weapons into the hands of the whites, huh? With those horses, they will hunt down, perhaps, your own tribe, huh? <laughs> Bueno, Caballo, we shall see if you are stronger than Martinez. Or thief. You dirty dog eater. You call me a thief? You are the true son of your father, that dog who sold his people to the white soldiers. You will die for those words. said bad words of my father. I told you he was a savage, a wild beast. Put that down, Tatu. Tatu, put it away. Put it away. All right, Martinez. Get back to the bunkhouse. Tatu, you come into the house. We have some serious talking to do. Unless you bring one on. Haas? I was wrong. Let's go. In my tribe, a man alone with a stock is a thief. You're no longer with your tribe. Tatu, we want to help you, but we can only do just so much. There's a school in Santa Fe, and we think you should go there. Like a child? I want to learn, but... But we talked it over and we feel it's a good thing. Now, the decision is still up to you. Santa Fe. I had not thought to leave you, my friends. I had not thought to go to another strange place. Haas, do you wish me to go to Santa Fe? Well, if not that I, I wish you to go, Tatro, it's, 
It's just that, well, you learn better there. They can, they can teach you better than we can. That school in Santa Fe is one of the best there is. Tattoo. Maybe you can learn something for your people. Like, maybe you can learn how to, how to grow things and show them how. How to, how to get meat and keep it on the table always. No. My people left me to die. I closed my eyes as an Indian and was reborn. Your doctor gave me new life. I will go to your school. In the morning, I'll let you and me ride into Virginia City and we'll pick you up some new duds. And I must cut hair. All right. And a haircut. How's that, huh? How you like it? it it's cooler. You get used to that. Oh, here, Paul. Oh, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get you a smaller size for it, Paul. Come on. I gotta pick up some stuff for Paul. You meet me over to horses after a while and we'll pick you up another hat, all right? <laughs> Come on, Pete. Show us how to do that heat, big Indian war dance. Come on, Pete, let's see you stop those buffalo hey, to the ground. Me war dance, me war dance. Me yeah. big buffalo Watch dance. This. Me oh, big Pete. hunter, me big warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Hunter, me, big warrior. Go away, kid. Leave him alone. Come on, Pete. Let's do it again. Oh, 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 oh. White men. White savage. The Indian does not laugh at old men. He does not laugh at the sacred way of others. Oh, wait, 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 All right. Hold it. Hold it. Stay calm. Jake, you and Odie. Did you got anything better to do? Be ashamed. You two tramp beat it. Go on, get out of here. Tattoo, as long as you stand there holding that knife like that, you ain't no different than all the rest of them.
Me, big warrior. was a fool, Hoss. But in that old man's face, I saw my people. All of them being laughed at. Yeah. I wish I could say I know how you felt, but... There ain't no way. I'm a white man. Look. Paul's got a little get-together, a little shindig he's cooking up. It's supposed to be a surprise, sort of a going-away party for you. So when you come in, act surprised. Don't you tell nobody I told you here. I will say nothing. Act surprised. So, you and I are white man, huh? <laughs> Hey, you're not missing your own party, are you? It is hot inside. Yeah, I suppose it is. Pa loves that fireplace. Keeps it going 12 months a year. I'm kind of thirsty. Want something to drink? Oh, I'd love something. Thank you. All right. How about you? No, thank you. You sure? Oh, hey, you wait here. I'll be right back. Mm. Isn't it just a heavenly night? It will be cold tomorrow. Far in the hills. I do wish you luck in Santa Fe. Thank you. I think it's wonderful of the Cartwrights to send you to school, so you can be civilized. Oh, dear. That's not what I meant at all. It is all right. I know what you meant. Oh, hi, Mr. Cartwright. It's really a heavenly party. Come on. Yes. You too, my friend. You belong in the mountains and in the plains. Tattoo. Last night. You said the Indian world was dying. I cannot get it out of my mind. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. I think if you go to the white school in Santa Fe, Tatu, but then I think you have been in school here on the Ponderosa. You have learned many things you did not know before. You have learned that Love is better than hate. Understanding is stronger than knives. Friendship is wiser than war. And maybe I can teach my people. If... Yeah, Tatu, let me tell you something. The greatest teacher of them all is your heart. Goodbye, little brother. Oh, no, senor. One of the men has seen him at dawn. He was riding fast up towards Bozing Cliffs, toward the north. Oh, well, he rode off once before. Maybe he'll be back again this time, too. Oh, no, senor. He will not return. He's right, Paul. He won't be coming back. He was an animal. Like I told you, a thief. He took the horse your hospitality, and he left nothing in return. 
I gave him the horse. It was his to take. And he left us everything he could. The only thing he had, this. St. Joe in eight days. That's something you know, that's less than half the time they've ever done it in before. That's hard to believe. Hard to believe it's a miracle. I tell you, this Pony Express is going to be the biggest thing that ever happened to the West. What an idea. You know, they put together the best string of thoroughbreds in the country for this job. They're gonna need them, getting over the Sierra into Sacramento from here. The last leg of the trip and the toughest. I don't think we have a horse in the Ponderosa this fast. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Hey, Joe! Yes, sir. A vision of this land. I saw the populous east and the great growing west tied together with a single thread. A thread of courageous young horsemen riding the wind, never leaving the saddle. An ever changing group of horsemen whose determination and strength and courage will make the Pony Express a living reality. That was my vision, my hope, my dream. But before we can do all that, I must have pledges of your support, pledges that all other communities so far have given me. And as soon as our receipts start rolling in, and a grateful government grants us a mail subsidy... How do we know that'll happen? I've been trying to get him to shake loose for 10 years for my stage line. All I got so far is six government mules, three inspectors, and a tax bill. <laughs> Ludlow, you're asking us to put our money into this express company of yours. I'd like to know a little more about you before I put a nickel in it. You want to know about Charles Ludlow, huh? You ever hear of the Erie Canal Riverboat Service? The New Orleans Clipper Lines? The Washington and Boston Packet and Mail? 
My father formed those companies. Yes, uh, gentlemen. I was privileged to make my contribution to the growth of this great land, but I consider those accomplishments to be less than nothing compared to the task I'm embarked on now. Because I've long known of the crying need. What that... about Winnemucca and his Paiutes? You think they're just going to sit there and let you ride across their land? Well, now, let's not start worrying about a bunch of redskins. It's my job to handle them. Well, Winnemucca's braves are more than just a bunch of redskins, Mr. Wade. I... They're about as fierce as tribe as you can find around here. I think they're to be reckoned with. Well, you haven't had any trouble with Winnemucca since that fight at Pyramid Lake, have you? No. No, but he's a... He's a strange man. <laughs> you never know what's going on in his mind. Oh, he might let you ride across his territory without any trouble at all. Yeah, he could do that. But then he might just as well decide to fight. Now, look. Did we come here for advice or dollars? You heard what Mr. Ludlow said about needing your support. Now, how about it? Thank you, Curtis. Now, my partner... Mr. Wade has, as always, hit the nail exactly on the head. Our most pressing need right now is money. I'll pledge $6,000. Thank you. Well, by golly, if Ben Cartwright thinks that much of the deal, I'm for it, too. You can put me down for $2,000, Ludlow. I'll go for $1,500. Excellent. Uh... You just write down here the amount you intend to invest. Uh, start with Mr. Cartwright. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Well, the uh, Cartwright trick rider, I do believe. <laughs> uh, we had a little race outside of town. <laughs> yeah, well, you still owe me a rematch. Well, I'd much rather you race for the Pony Express than against it. Uh, my name is Jabez Ludlow. Good to see you. Well, why don't you join us? Well, I've been thinking about it. Well, uh, I think we have plenty of work for this young man to do on the Ponderosa. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Cartwright! Uh, my partner, Mr. Wade, and I would like to speak with you privately, if we may. Fine. The boys will wait for me. Joe, you ain't seriously thinking about joining us out well, why not? Sure, I'm seriously thinking about it. You heard what Mr. Ludlow said about it being one of the most important things ever happened in the West. Yeah, but, Joe, you're gonna risk your life. Well, it's my life, isn't it? <sighs> Gentlemen, I... I don't know what to say. Say yes, Ben. You're the man we want. The man we need to make this a going enterprise. I've been watching the progress of the Pony Express with a great deal of interest. Ben, as a member of our board of directors, you'll be invaluable to us. You see, it takes men not only with vision, but men with a practical knowledge of the West uh, to make a thing like this a going one. What do you say, Mr. Cartwright? You want to be a part of it? Yeah. Yes, I want to be part of it. Woohoo! Look at him go! He's scooping up sand Young. in his vest pocket! Not over 25 years. Must be expert riders willing to risk death daily. Orphans prefer. <laughs> That's 25 a month! Our horses can't carry that much weight over the distances we have to travel. Sorry. Next. Name. Aaron Bornstein. I weigh 130 pounds, see lightning and hear thunder. Can you ride a horse? Mister, I'm born on a horse. <laughs> oh boy, you're going to get a chance to prove it. You mean I'm hired? Yeah, you're now Pony Express rider. Pick a bunk in the back room. Name? Pat Hanley. What do you weigh? 129 pounds. That's about right. 
I was born on a horse, too. Pick a bunk in the back room. Excuse me, friend. Looking for a job, friend? Yeah. Where you from? Right here in Virginia City. Got a ranch right outside of town. Cartwright! Hey, your best. How you doing? Fine. You uh, decided to join us, huh? Yeah, yeah. You finally talked me into it. I'm glad. It's a big job. We, uh, we need riders like you. Son, it sounds like you got the fever. I have. You'll get it, too. I can guarantee that, mister. Just so the paycheck comes in each month. It don't matter to me one way or the other. <laughs> I better get my place in line. I'll see you later. Right. What are you going to learn how to read? All right, it says, neither rain nor sleet nor gloom of night will stay the courier on his way. I guess he never heard of a horse stepping in a prairie dog hole. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Pays 125 a month. That's more money than most of you have seen in your lives. Out of that, you buy your own gear and handguns. Handguns? What about using a rifle? I'd like to keep Indians at a distance. Well, that's why we give you fast, grain-fed horses. You use them for speed. Outrun them. Don't try to outfight them. And I've got one rule you better all remember. Bring yourselves and the mail in on time. Or bring yourselves in dead. That's all. Be here tomorrow morning, ready to go to work. You're Joe Carter, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's right. I'm Emmett Carver, down in Carson City. Hi, you? Emmett. Your dad and mine know each other. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I heard my father mention him many times. What do you think of that Wade? He sure liked a kid, don't he? Oh, yeah, he's a real barrel of laughs, that's for sure. <laughs> You know, I told my dad this is going to be a real safe job. <laughs> Wait till he hears about that number one rule, on schedule or dead. That'd kill him. Please, please, don't use that word. I'll see you later. All right. Hey, fellas, here's the schedule. Who rides and where? Excuse me, fellas. Joe. Yeah. Uh, don't mind Mr. Wade. He's, uh, he's tough, but he's fair. He'll take care of his men. How long you known him? Mm, about three years. Used to be an Indian fighter in the Southwest. Pop thinks he's a man to make this operation work. I'm inclined to agree with him. Well, I gotta admit, he talks tough enough. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Right. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I'll... It's afraid I'd find you here. I saw your horse tied up out here. You know, we got a lot of work to do, Joe. We gotta move all those cattle down from that north pasture. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to help you move him. Joe, you didn't... Yeah, I joined him. <sighs> Paul sure ain't going to like that. I know, I'm not looking forward to telling him either. Well, I guess I better get on home. <laughs> I, I sure don't understand you, Joseph. Why couldn't you at least have talked to me about it? Because I was afraid you were going to say no. Because you were afraid I was going to say no. And could there possibly be a reason for me saying no? Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. I... Yes, sir. With Adam gone, I need both of you here. This ranch won't run by itself. Look, Paul, you gave money to the Pony Express. You're on the board of directors. Now, I just don't see why you won't let me ride for him. Because I... Because I need you here. Oh, now, you know that's not the reason. Look, Paul, nothing's going to happen to me. Look, you, you told me how important the Pony Express was, that the biggest thing that ever happened in the West. Well, I want to be part of it. Just for a little while. You get yourself upstairs and pack those bags of yours if you're going to report to the Pony Express in the morning. I'll get off with you. Thanks, sir. You don't look so sad. You lose about 190 pounds, I'll put a word in for you. I lose 190 pounds, I couldn't keep a saddle on me. Paul, you know what those fellas are going to be riding through, don't you? Yes, yes, I know. Freezing blizzards. 1,500 miles of dry desert, endless mountains, not to mention a couple of thousand Indians. Of course I know. But I tell you, if I was 25 years younger, 
Well, you don't think I could have stopped him anyway, do you? No, Dad, burn it. I know you could. Hulk, what's the arrow holding? Scalp. <laughs> Little Joe's out there, too. Stay here, Joe. It's safer. Don't worry. I'll outrun him. You're skillful or just plain lucky. It don't matter, boy, just as long as I keep taking your money. Uh, greetings, fellow mail carriers. Wade wasn't kidding when he said we had the fastest horses in the West. They're really movers. Hey, where's Emity? Quit? He's dead. Paiutes. Jumped him between here and the last station. Sent back his pony and his hair. Just so as we'd know. We thought you was a goner too, little Joe. 
Well, I guess I had a faster horse. I never told you boys this was going to be easy. I never promised you brass bands and cotton candy for the rest of your lives. We lost a man, sure, and we're all sorry. Are we going to let that stop us? I've been fighting Indians all my life, and I've yet to meet the feathered buzzard that could scare me out of doing anything I'd set my mind to. And I've set my mind, yes, and my heart, on making the Pony Express a reality. Well, now, if any of you feel that you can't cut it, you can just roll up your gear and call it quits. That's all I've got to say. Told us Pie had a real safe job. Little Joe, you quitting? No, I can't quit. I got too big an investment in this company. Still only a month's pay. Hello? Anybody here? In here. Rejoice, for the press has come to make you famous, Mr. Ludlow. <laughs> Tully, Washington Globe, I am pleased. Well, I'm not Ludlow. Name's Wade. Oh? Can I help you? Oh, I'm afraid not. You see, I came out here to do a story on Ludlow and his famous pony riders. Oh, well, look at that. Ludlow and Wayne. <laughs> oh, then you're partners. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Wade. But I'm afraid you still can't help me. You see, back east, nobody ever heard of you. All they talk about is the great visionary, Charles Ludlow. Well, they should. Without him, there wouldn't be any Pony Express. Oh, yes, he's a very famous man, you know. Caught the imagination of uncounted thousands. All right, friend. Here's your chance to meet him. This is Mr. Charles Ludlow, my partner. This is Mr. Tully of the Washington Globe. Well, it's a real honor, Mr. Ludlow. It isn't often that I stand in the presence of greatness. Well, now, you flatter me, Mr. Tully. Oh, no. My editor sent me 3,000 miles just to write a story about you and the way you've built your great Pony Express. Well, I'll certainly tell him all I know about it. <laughs> Would you like some coffee? Well, I'd rather have a drink. Oh, I'm afraid we don't have spirits in this office, Mr. Tully. Oh, well, in that case, coffee it is. Uh, Charles, I'd like you to look at the bills for those new horses. Curtis, that can wait. You know I don't care about business. Get our guests some coffee and bring me some, too. You see, Mr. Tully, this is more than just a story. This is a saga. I had a vision, a great one, a vision of this land of ours, the populous East and the great West tied together by a single thread of riders, of Mr. courageous Ludlow. young... Mr. Ludlow. I, uh, I want to get this all down. Uh, but you see, I, I, at the moment, I'm still a bit groggy from my, my trip, and I wonder if it'd be possible to arrange an interview for, say, this afternoon. Uh, well, um... <laughs> Well, of course, at, at your convenience, Mr. Tully. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I want you to know the whole nation, the whole world, is waiting to hear your story. You're the man of the hour. Believe me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tully. I'll, I'll see you later. Curtis! Curtis, did you hear what he said about me? Old Curtis, we're going places. 
Who knows what we might do? Man of the hour, he said, stand in the presence of greatness. But the Pony Express might be a stepping stone, a great opportunity. Think of that, my friend. A whole nation at my feet. Think of it, my friend. I have been thinking of it, Charles. Here, drink your coffee before it gets cold. I wish you could have known Emmett Carver. He was really a heck of a guy. Always laughing and joking all the time. I know, Joe. Joe, you ride again first thing in the morning, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. I better get some sleep. Paul, you reckon you could ride into Winnemucca's camp and talk with him? I did send it at that peace meeting with him, Pyramid Lake. He ain't very peaceful with nobody right now, is he? Tobacco. In Cartwright, no forget. It's been a long time, great chief. Why you come on my land? To speak of peace with an old friend. And to ask why my old friend kills the pony riders. They do no harm. They carry only letters, sometimes medicine. They are men of peace. Hear me, Ben Cartwright. First, one pony rider, then wagons, then many white men, many white guns. Soon my land become your land. But it would not happen that way. And there is a way to avoid it, by making a treaty and setting down in that treaty the number of riders that you would allow to cross your land. In that way, you could control the situation. Treaties, easy to break by white man. I have seen many false white faces, heard many false white words. How can you speak to me of treaties? You are a father. You have sons. Do you wish to see your sons die before their time? I am a father. I have sons. One of them is a pony rider. Father's heart is hard to carry, but Winnemucca is not only a father. He is leader of his people. My people must survive. You tell your pony men, if they come on my land, I will kill them. Get to Winnemucca. Yeah, we saw him all right. Yeah, where's Mr. Ludlow? Just went down to the hotel with Mr. Wade. What did Winnemucca say? Is there any chance for a treaty? No. Hey, Joseph. 
I know I haven't any right to ask you not to make your run, but as a father, I'd sure feel a whole lot better if you didn't. Oh, you know, I can't do that. If I don't make the ride, one of the other fellows is going to have to. I, I can't back out just because the going gets rough. Delay it as long as you can, anyhow. Let Paul have a chance to talk to Ludlow. We've got to reroute the Pony Express around Winnemucca. We can't. It's as simple as that. Wait. What do you want in here? An Indian war? It'll take us months to build those new relay stations. If we stop those riders now, we'll never get that government subsidy. And without that, we're finished. Out of business. Well, as far as I'm concerned, no business is worth the loss of a single human life. And no Indian is going to dictate terms to me. If we have to lock horns with them, so be it. But I say... I say Ben is right. We just have to cease operations until the stations are built. Oh, Curtis, Curtis, why don't you calm down a little? When you're older and wiser, you Don't really... you patronize me. Well, I didn't realize I was doing that. You haven't realized a lot of things. You want to stop the writers. I don't. I think we better put this before the board. Let them decide. Fine, if that's what you... Cartwright, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be out in your run. We've got a schedule to keep. My pa said to I know what your pa said. Ornstein? Yes, sir? You're gonna have to do Cartwright's job for him. Yes, sir? You just stay here. I do my own riding, Mr. Wade. And keep that schedule. What are you doing here? Waiting for Mr. Ludlow. We were to hold that interview, you know. Yes, I know. You know, very few men live up to your expectations of them. But that Mr. Ludlow, everybody I talk to says, Mr. Ludlow says this, Mr. Ludlow says that. Mr. Ludlow is a past master at saying things. Doing things is something else. I'm telling you this. Do your story. Well, now, Ludlow's only a story if he runs the express. Now, if that doesn't happen to be true... Why should I lie to you? Well, I can give you a lot of reasons. How about resentment just for openers? Look, Mr. Wade, Ludlow is my story until I learn otherwise. Now, to my readers, he's the leader of this outfit, the visionary. To be quite frank, he's the dashing man on the white horse. And what if he fell off that white horse? Oh, now, that would be another matter. But let me caution you. You don't knock down a man like Charles Ludlow very easily. I know that. I was going through some of Ludlow's files the other day. I ran into some very interesting reading. How's that for openers? It's like you're holding all the aces, Mr. Wayne.
See, gentlemen, it's quite simple. We must have a peace treaty with Winnemucca. Oh, Ludlow, now, you now, can't now, make us. Please, 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 I have prepared just such a treaty. There is the document. And I think they'll find that quite acceptable. You see, we offer to pay for any one of our riders who crosses Winnemucca's lands. The last time we tried to get a treaty with that old Paiute, it took almost a year. Now, why should it be any different this time? Well, it won't be any different. Not unless we come up with some gesture of goodwill to Winnemucca. Cartwright, talk sense. Our only chance to survive is to obtain a government subsidy. Isn't that right, Mr. Ludlow? Well, I... Well, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. But I still don't see what that has to do with this treaty. We, we can't go on conducting business without a treaty with the Indians. If we have to suspend the Pony Express, even for one day, if we hold up the mayor, we failed. No, no, I tell you to no. I don't have to tell you, gentlemen, the financial structure of this company is shaky. If we don't get that subsidy, we're out of business. Now, Curtis, we'll do this my way. And I insist on a treaty with you. You insist? I insist. What makes you think you've got the right to insist or anything else? As soon as our friends here take a look at these papers, we'll see who yeah, they'll listen see. to. Let's you see. or me. Yeah. 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 Creditors' reports. Yeah. Creditors' reports? What kind of creditors, Wade? I'll tell you what kind. The men who backed and supported various and assorted companies, such as the Erie Canal Riverboat Service, New Orleans Clipper Line, Washington and Boston Packet, all of which were headed by Mr. Ludlow and all of which went broke. That was all in the past. It's over. Is it? Isn't your father trying to stop the operation of the Pony Express while we palaver with a bunch of redskins? You think that's the kind of man the government is going to subsidize a quitter? He's ready to send us into bankruptcy right now, just as surely as he did these other companies. Custom, you didn't what are you trying to pull off here, Ludlow? Wait a minute. Are these reports Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's hear what Mr. Ludlow has to say. I do not deny those reports. Look, if you don't want to lose your money the same way all of Mr. Ludlow's other creditors did, I'm asking you to give me a fighting chance to keep the Pony Express in operation. Don't give in to Winnemucca. We'll fight him. We'll outrun him. We'll run him into the ground if we have to. And how many pony riders will have to die in the process? They volunteered. If they don't like it, they can get out. We've got a right to protect our interests. I say we give Mr. Wade a vote of confidence. Now, wait a minute. Let's discuss a little more. Let's just... All in favor, say aye. Aye! Opposed? Opposed. Board has spoken, Mr. Ludlow. You're no longer the head of this organization. was it all for? A pat on the back for me and another failure for you? I was hoping this was it. That once, just once in your life, you'd finish something. You'd, you'd see it through. Son, you heard what they said to me. And there you, you saw what happened. I saw you crumble and collapse before a man named Curtis Wade. I watched him take the Pony Express away from you without even a struggle. Didn't you ever really care about the Express? Or was it just a, another bunch of words for you to sound off with? Son, you shouldn't speak this way to me. I've always wanted you to be proud of your father. Proud? Of what? Of his failures? Of all his great achievements that went bust? of watching him run out on one thing after another? Last thing in the world I wanted was to let anybody down. 
especially you. Well, you've done something worse. You've let yourself down. out. He's a good one. He ran 30 miles. 30 miles, did you say? I couldn't stop leaving the well station. How come? Paiutes. Paiutes? Mr. Cartwright, your son, little Joe, he's trapped in that station. I heard the shooting. I circled the place. Them Paiutes is having themselves a time. How do you know it was little Joe in there? We were supposed to pass in the road. We didn't. I'm going with him. I ain't never missed an Indian fight in my life. Mr. Wade, you really fight all those Indians back in Texas like you're telling us about?
tell you those bugles were music to my ears. <laughs> I have to come out then, Paul. All right. Hang on tight. No. Of you. You hear? I'm so proud of you. Is this according to your schedule, Mr. Wade? No, I never wanted it to come to this. Greg, what are you trying to do? He's trying to get a peace treaty with Winnemuck. On Express was his, his dream, his life. He died for it. The least we can do is keep it going. All right, we'll keep it going. You got to finish your run to Sacramento, Cartwright? You bet I am. Schwerer Anfang. Aber endlich hatte man die Reiter gefunden. Stationen für die Pferdewechsel aufgebaut und das Unternehmen in Gang gebracht. Endlich wurde Post befördert. In diesem Sommer ging es mit dem Pony Express nach Westen. Es war ein neuer und gefahrvoller Weg, der die beiden Küsten verbinden sollte. Der gefährlichste Abschnitt der Strecke führt durch das Territorium der Paiuten und ihres Häuptlings Winamaka. Meine Sorgen um das Leben der jungen Reiter, unter ihnen mein Sohn Little Joe, veranlassten mich zu einer Unterredung mit Winnemacca. Seine Antwort war kurz und endgültig. Du sag deinen Ponymännern, wenn sie über mein Land reiten, erwartet sie der Tod. Mit den Ponyreitern kamen Männer, die von großen Träumen erfüllt waren, wie Charles Ludlow. Sein Partner, Curtis Wade, hegte die gleichen großen Hoffnungen. Aber er stand im Schatten Ludlows. Bis Mr. Tully kam. Das ist Mr. Charles Ludlow, mein Partner. Und das ist Mr. Tully vom Washington Globe. Sehr erfreut. Es ist mir eine große Ehre, Mr. Ludlow. Aber Wade wollte sich nicht damit begnügen, in Ludlows Schatten zu stehen. Ich habe neulich ein paar von Ludlows Unterlagen durchgesehen. Habt eine Menge interessanten Lesestoff gefunden. Hm? Ludlows Niederlage war für seinen Sohn Jebes, einem begeisterten jungen Reiter, ein schwerer Schock. Ich wollte immer, dass du stolz auf deinen Vater bist. Auf dich stolz sein? Wieso denn? Wegen deiner Fehlschläge? Charles Ludlow unternahm einen letzten verzweifelten Versuch, seinen Traum zu retten. Er versuchte, Winnemucca zu einem Friedensvertrag zu überreden. Und auch dieses Mal war die Antwort endgültig. Charles Ludlow hat uns allen etwas hinterlassen. Deinen Traum. Und dieser Traum ist uns eine Verpflichtung. 
seinen Pony Express, für den von heute an wir verantwortlich sind. Wir dürfen uns dem nicht entziehen. Wir können diesen Auftrag nicht zurückgeben. Er hinterließ uns das Vermächtnis, seinen Traum Wirklichkeit werden zu lassen. Zum würdigen Angedenken seines Mutes. Ich danke Ihnen für Ihre Worte, Mr. Cartwright. Danke, Mr. Wade. Ich gebe Ihnen recht. Das Beste, was wir für Charles Ludlow tun können, ist seinen Express weiterführen. Durch Winamakas Territorium? Die Entscheidung darüber, denke ich, ist doch wohl gefallen. Ich denke, wir sollten diese Entscheidung jetzt ändern. Charles Ludlow hat Frieden angeboten und wurde getötet. Sein Tod war nicht notwendig. Er hätte wissen müssen, dass er nicht allein zu Winnemaker reiten durfte. Er wollte sinnloses Blutvergießen verhindern. Doch das bedeutet Ihnen wohl nichts. Mir bedeutet es etwas, Mr. Cartwright, den Pony Express weiterzuführen. Glauben Sie mir, auch mir geht der Verlust von Menschenleben nahe. Aber das darf uns nicht aufhalten. Ich führe die Sache zum Erfolg. Das ist das Einzige, das ich für Ludlow tun kann. Für Ludlow? Oder für Wade? Morgen, Mr. Cartwright. Morgen, Tag, was? Morgen. Hulk, Little Joe müsste jeden Moment ankommen, ne? Klar. Machen Sie sich etwa Sorgen? Das, Mr. Postreiter, ist das Vorrecht eines Vaters.
Es ist ein wundervoller Tag für Väter beim Pony Express. Ich bin Samuel Bornstein, Arons Vater. Oh, sehr freut. Sie sehen fabelhaft aus. Mein Name er hat ist Sie Kat Cartwright genannt. Ja. Dann sind Sie Little Joes Vater. So oh, ich kenne Sie alle durch die Briefe meines Sohnes Aaron. Das ist Herb. Und das ist Hoki. Und Sie. Sie sind wohl kein Reiter. Nein, aber ich bin gern dabei, Mr. Bornstein. Ich bin Little Joes schwerer Bruder, Horst. Ist es nicht wundervoll? In ganz Philadelphia wird von nichts anderem geredet. Alle bei uns reden nur von diesen Jungs, die von St. Joseph, Missouri bis zum Pazifik reiten. Es ist wie ein Märchen. Sie haben recht, Mr. Bornstein. Es ist ein modernes Märchen. Viel Glück, Hawk. Fällt Ihnen das, Mr. Bornstein, oder ist Ihnen die Luft weggeblieben? Wieder Schwierigkeiten? Ja, verdammt große. Die Indianer haben Indian Wells wieder überfallen. Reit noch nicht los. Ich rede erst Hey, halt mal mein Pferd. Little Joe, alles okay? Klar, Papa, nur ein bisschen müde, das ist alles. <lacht> ah, Joseph, das ist Mr. Bornstein. Aarons Vater ist aus Philadelphia gekommen. Freut mich, Sie kennenzulernen, Sir. Ich habe mit Wade zu reden. Entschuldigt mich. Stimmt da irgendwas nicht? Oh, nein, nein. Wissen Sie, Joe hat es meistens fürchterlich eilig. Mr. Cartwright, jetzt müsste mein Junge eintreffen. Ed und Rudy sind tot und die Pferde weg. Solche Verluste können wir uns nicht leisten. Ich hoffe, Sie denken da im Wesentlichen an die beiden Männer. Ich hab's euch doch gesagt, dass sich die Geschichte lohnt. Bedeutet das das Ende des Bonnie Express, Mr. Wade? Nein, das bedeutet es nicht. Es wird Zeit, Herb. Du solltest seit zehn Minuten unterwegs sein. Aber Sie wissen doch, dass Indian Wells besetzt ist. Da wirst ist. du deine Knochen zusammenreißen und zur nächsten Station reiten. Sie sind der Boss, Mr. Wade. Kart reit. Um Ed und Rudi tut es mir wirklich leid. Aber wir geben deswegen noch lange nicht auf. Ja. Ich würde gern mal so einen fliegenden Wechsel sehen, Mr. Wade. In England geht das Gerücht, dass Ihre Pony Express Reiter besser sind als die russischen Kosaken. Das ist kein Gerücht, Gentlemen. Hm. Wenn ich Sie hier entlang bin, darf. Was ist denn mit Ihnen los, Wade? So hoffnungslos, wie Sie aussehen, kann es doch gar nicht sein. So meinen Sie. Indian Wells ist die dritte Station, die verloren gegangen ist. Wir kämpfen auf einer Strecke von 1000 Meilen gegen die Indianer. Sioux, Cheyenne, Chirokesen. Und jetzt die Pajuten. Aber das alles ergibt doch hochinteressante Berichte. Curtis Wade, Wegbereiter, Pionier, Indianerkämpfer. <lacht> Sie werden doch mal ein bedeutender Mann, mein Freund. Und äh, wer weiß, äh, mit ein bisschen Glück, werden Sie vielleicht ein noch bedeutenderer Mann als Charles Ludlow. <lacht> Hast du genug Munition bei dir? Wird schon reichen. Schon mein Pferd, ist ein langer Ritt. Ja, ich weiß. Das muss mein Sohn sein. Ja, das ist mein Sohn. Hey Aaron, rat mal, wer hier ist. Aaron! Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Ich bin's, dein Papa. Aaron, Aaron, Papa. Aaron, mein Sohn. Ich bin ja so glücklich, dich wiederzusehen. Papa, was machst du denn hier? Was ich hier mache? Was ich hier mache, Aaron? Ich bin hergekommen, um meinen Sohn zu besuchen. Das ist doch kein Unrecht. <lacht> Nein, Papa. Lass mich dich mal genau ansehen. Was hast du denn? Aaron, was fehlt dir? Nichts, Papa, nur ein bisschen Nasenbluten. Du weißt doch, früher hatte ich auch so oft Nasenbluten. Nasenbluten? Wie kommt ein harter pony express reiter zu einer so fürchterlich blutenden Nase? Du solltest hören, wie sie in Philadelphia über Samuel Bronstens Sohn reden. Mr. Cartwright, jetzt spendieren wir unseren Söhnen ein Bier. 
Gehen Sie schon vor, Mr. Bornstein. Wir treffen uns im Silver Dollar. Machen wir, Mr. Cartwright. Komm, Aaron. Komm, wir genehmigen uns ein Bier. Ja. Du hast doch sicher großen Durst, nicht wahr? Aaron. Was ist mit Aaron los? Keine Ahnung. Wahrscheinlich hat er sich ein bisschen überanstrengt. Er ist nicht der einzige. Herb ist auch in ziemlich schlechter Verfassung. Und wo euch jetzt auch noch Indian Wells fehlt, wird die Sache für euch nicht einfacher. Wade sagt, er will morgen zusätzlich noch ein paar Leute rausschicken. Keine Ahnung, wo er sie hernehmen will. Bisher haben die Pajuten die Station zweimal überfallen und sie werden es wieder tun. Eigentlich könnte man die Leute gleich zu Winnermacker schicken. Eines verändert sich jedenfalls nicht. Ob in Philadelphia oder in Virginia City. Bier bleibt Bier. <lacht> Na, junger Mann, sind Sie schon alt genug, um sich im Saloon aufzuhalten? Wissen Sie, wenn man alt genug ist, für den Pony Express zu reiten, dann darf man auch im Saloon ein Bier trinken. Ah, komm, sei ehrlich. Du hast dir dein Rasiermesser doch nur schenken lassen, damit du bessere Zahnstocher schnitzen kannst. Habe ich recht? <lacht> Aaron, wie lange ist denn dieser kleine Junge hier schon bei euch? Ähm, er ist noch ziemlich neu bei uns, Papa. Er kam für Emmett Carver. Emmett? Das war doch der, der immer so viel Witze gemacht hat. Ja, ja. Wo ist er denn? Hat er gekündigt? Oh. Weißt du, Papa, ja, er hat gekündigt. Gekündigt? Ich denke, den haben die Pajuten auf dem Gewissen. <lacht> Aaron, du hustest ja dauernd. Was fehlt dir denn? Ach, das, das kommt nur vom vielen Staub, Papa. Das, das gibt sich schon wieder. Es gibt sich wieder nicht, Little Joe. Ja, das kommt wirklich vom Staub, Mr. Bornstein. Sie brauchen sich keine Sorgen zu machen. Hm. Ah, noch drei Biere für unsere Freunde. Danke. Hey, Leute, die Firma. Die Herren veranstalten eine kleine Feier. Was ist denn der Anlass? Wir trinken nur ein gepflegtes, freundliches Bier. Wollen Sie auch eins? Diese Reiter befördern die Post. Das ist ein gefährlicher Job und dazu müssen Sie nüchtern sein. Na, wo ist denn nun das Bier? Und jetzt ein Trinkspruch. Rheim. Das heißt zum Wohl. Uh, wait. Was wollen Sie? Ich will einen Job. Einen Job? Sie sagten, Sie brauchen in Indian Wells noch einige Männer. Kann ich mitreiten? Indian Wells ist die gefährlichste Station, die wir auf der ganzen westlichen Route haben. Ich weiß, aber Little Joe und seine Freunde müssen durch Winnemakkas Territorium reiten. Und die Jungs brauchen diese Station auf der Strecke, sonst werden sie es nicht mehr lange durchhalten. Okay, sie sollen den Job haben. Übrigens, ich werde die Station befestigen lassen. Falls es Winnemakka noch mal versuchen sollte, wird er staunen. Seien Sie morgen früh draußen. Okay, Mr. Wade. Was ist denn los mit dir? Willst du einen Drink? Nein, danke. Wusst ihr nicht, ich brauche einen. Little Joe, hast du schon mal einen getroffen, der seinen Vater getötet hat? Aha. Darauf läuft's also hinaus. Ist das deine Form der Buße? Eine merkwürdige Buße für etwas, was du nicht getan hast. <lacht> nicht getan? So. 
Ich weiß, die Pfeile haben die Indianer auf ihn abgeschossen. Aber der eigentlich Schuldige bin ich. So, und deswegen hängst du hier rum, besäufst dich sinnlos und versuchst aller Welt zu zeigen, wie leid es dir tut, hä? Ah, was ist aus Jebes Ladlo geworden, der sogar dem Wind davonreiten wollte? Der Kerl, der sich doch nicht so niemand unterkriegen lassen wollte. Ich bin zu gar nichts mehr gut. Ich bin erledigt. Und mit dem Reiten ist es auch vorbei. Ich kann nicht mehr für den Pony Express reiten. Ich kann für niemanden mehr reiten. Sieh dir dieses Bein doch an! Mein Problem ist nicht dein Bein, sondern dein Selbstbewusstsein. Sonst du so ich versteh auf, wenn ich mit dir rede. Du sitzt da und winselst, wie sehr du deinen Vater geliebt hast. Versuchst du es damit zu beweisen? Der Pony Express, von dem dein Vater geträumt hat. Der Traum, für den er sein Leben geopfert hat. Der wird weiter existieren. Und ich versichere dir, er wird auch ohne dich weiter existieren. Na und, sieh mich doch an! Was glaubst du denn, was ich dafür noch tun kann? Du kannst doch denken! Du kannst schießen und kannst sogar nach Indian Wells rausreiten und meinem Bruder helfen, es wieder aufzubauen. Du kannst eine ganze Menge tun, Jebes. Du musst dich nur dazu entschließen. Du weißt es genau, du hast deinen Vater nicht getötet. Willst du die Erinnerung an ihn umbringen? Joe. Wann, äh, wann braucht ihr mich in Indian Wells? Du brauchst erstmal eine Tasse Kaffee. Geht die Bursche. Wilson, du und der Rest, ihr folgt mir. Wir greifen sie frontal an. Ich glaube, die sind wir los. It's Herb. Mr. Cartwright? Mr. Cartwright? Mr. Cartwright? Die ganze Zeit Sie nicht essen. Die ganze Zeit Sie sehen so traurig aus. Hörst du das Haus aufsingen? Hörst du sein Schweigen? Oh. 
Weißt du noch, wie wir dieses Haus gebaut haben, Absin? Wir haben es uns gebaut, um glücklich zu sein. Mrs. Cartwright, Little Joes Mutter, Adam, Hoss, <lacht> Little Joe. Sie alle waren hier glücklich. Und dafür haben wir es gebaut, um zu Hause zu sein. Als Zuflucht für eine Familie. Ob es Ihnen gefallen, diese Stille auch nicht? Es ist alles vergangen. Mr. Kaltleit, ich mache Ihnen jetzt ein warmes Essen und dann Sie essen. Jemand ist draußen. Guten Abend. Ich bin Curtis Wade. Ist Mr. Cartwright zu Hause? Kommen Sie rein, bitte. Mr. Cartwright da drinnen. Mr. Cartwright, Ben, auch wenn wir einige Meinungsverschiedenheiten hatten, so waren Sie doch der zuverlässigste Freund, den der Pony Express je gehabt hat. Ich versuchte zu helfen. Ich weiß und ich bitte Sie nochmals um Ihre Hilfe. Der Pony Express ist in Gefahr zusammenzubrechen und ich bin mit meinem Latein am Ende. Wir sind so gut wie erledigt. Die Reiter sind am Ende ihrer Kräfte und ich habe kein Geld mehr, sie zu bezahlen, geschweige denn neue einzustellen. Morgen früh brauche ich zehn Pferde in Indian Wells und ich habe nicht mal fünf, die ihr Futter wert sind. Ich weiß es und die Reiter wissen es. Das Einzige, was unseren Express noch in Gang hält, ist die Energie unserer jungen Reiter. Setzen Sie sich. Für das Erste könnte ich Ihnen zehn bis zwölf Pferde zur Verfügung stellen. Und in der nächsten Woche können wir noch mehr zusammentreiben. Es geht mir nicht nur um die Pferde, verstehen Sie? Diese Postsubvention hängt immer noch in der Luft. Ich brauche Geld, Cartwright. Ich brauche Geld. Wie viel brauchen Sie? Fünf, sechstausend Dollar. Der größte Teil meiner flüssigen Mittel steckt inzwischen im Pony Express. Und äh, ich muss auch die Ranch weiterführen. Es hat mich Jahre gekostet, sie aufzubauen. Wenn ich Ihnen gebe, was ich am Bargeld jetzt noch zur Verfügung habe, würde ich fast alles hier aufs Spiel setzen. Ich kann nicht besonders gut betteln, Cartwright. Ich bin in der Hoffnung, hierher gekommen, den Pony Express erhalten zu können. Offenbar ist es Charles Ludlow leichter gefallen zu überreden, aber das ist nicht meine Stärke. Gratuliere zum großen Erfolg. Ich bin erledigt. Wade! Ich habe gesagt, dass es mir nicht leicht fällt, Ihnen das Geld zu geben. Ich habe nicht gesagt, dass ich es nicht tue. Ich habe zwei Söhne, die für den Pony Express arbeiten. Ich habe hier noch 5000 Dollar drin. Sie können sie haben. Und natürlich die Pferde. Ben, ich bin kein zweiter Charles Ludlow. Ich, ich bin nicht so begabt für große Worte, aber... Ludlow ist tot. Von ihm wird nur übrig bleiben, was Sie erhalten wollen. Der Pony Express. Solange wie Sie ihm die Treue halten und den jungen Reitern, die für ihn gestorben sind, solange werde ich zu Ihnen halten. Mr. Cartwright, was führt Sie denn in die Stadt? Oh, ich bringe für die Jungs ein paar frische Pferde. Gut. Und ich warte darauf, dass mein Aaron auftaucht. Aha. Sie brauchen nicht mehr zu warten.
Harry, my son. He lived and died for our country. Didn't he, Mr. Cartwright? Why should I cry? I should be proud that my Aaron was such a wonderful, wonderful boy. <laughs> Werden Sie und Ihr Pony Express Mr. vor den Kajuten kapitulieren, Mr. Wade. Mr. Wade, wie weit ist die Entscheidung über die Regierungssubvention herangereicht? Gentlemen, bitte. Bitte, Monsieur, gewähren Sie mir eine ungestörte Minute. Es soll doch ein gutes Bild werden. S'il vous plaît. Was wollen Sie denn mit meinem Bild anfangen? Sie werden langsam an der ganzen Ostküste berühmt, Mr. Wade. Es halten sich hartnäckige Gerüchte, dass Sie ein möglicher Anwärter auf einen Sitz im nächsten Nationalkonvent seien. Das, das ist doch Unsinn. In Washington ist man darüber anderer Ansicht, Curtis. Die New Yorker Presse ist schon auf ihrer Seite. Mein Verleger wäre sogar bereit, ihre Bewerbung öffentlich zu unterstützen. Sie gelten als der Mann der Stunde. Der Mann hoch zu Pferde. Das ehrt mich. Aber ich habe hier eine große Aufgabe zu erfüllen. Solche Reden machen Schlagzeilen, Mr. Wade. Und Präsidentschaftskandidaten, Gentlemen. Das wäre alles für heute, Jungs. Das gilt auch für Sie, Mr. Fontaine. Mr. Wade und ich haben noch einige Privatangelegenheiten zu besprechen. Aber, Monsieur, so wird das Bild niemals fertig. Aber nicht doch, mein Freund. Ich werde persönlich dafür sorgen, dass Sie Ihr Werk vollenden können. Sie hatten da vorhin eine Idee très magnifique. Ich werde ja. ihn malen als Held auf dem Pferd. Ja, Z une idée ich très grande. Überzeugt. So, Curtis, ich glaube, die Sache läuft sehr gut an. Du hast den Pony Express am Leben erhalten und du stehst vor dem ganz großen Erfolg. Aber genauso gut kann in ein paar Minuten alles aus sein. Unsere Vertrauensmänner kämpfen in Washington für die Postsubvention. Und diese Postsubvention erhält den Pony Express und garantiert deine politische Zukunft. Aber sowas kostet eine Menge Geld. Denk darüber nach. Ich habe dir jeden Cent gegeben, den ich hatte. Wir brauchen weit mehr. Oder ich verspreche dir, dass alles zusammenbricht. Und woher soll ich es nehmen, frage ich dich. Du kennst doch die Schwierigkeiten, die uns Winomaka macht. Wir können keine Zeiten einhalten, er tötet meine Reiter. Und die Überlebenden können sich kaum mehr in den Sätteln halten. Ganz zu schweigen von den Pferden. Seit Indian Wells überfallen wurde, sind zwei weitere Stationen besetzt worden. Die Pferde und das Inventar fielen in die Hände der Indianer. Was erwartest du noch von mir? Du hast immer noch das Geld von Cartwright in der Brieftasche. Davon bezahle ich die Löhne für meine Reiter. Wir haben monatelang keinen Dollar mehr gesehen. Charles Ladlows Schwäche und Unentschlossenheit haben ihn alles gekostet, was er besaß. Sie kosteten ihn seinen Traum, seine Reputation... Und sein Leben. Jetzt geht es um den Pony Express, die Postsubvention und um deine Zukunft als Politiker, Curtis. Du bist dir doch klar, was das bedeutet. Es ist noch nicht zu spät. Nur so kannst du dich auf dem großen weißen Pferd halten. Bist du soweit, Wilson? Fertig, Jabez. Von mir aus kann's losgehen. Okay. 
Äh, wo ist Horst Kartreif? Ah, der ist nach Virginia City geritten, um Lebensmittel und Munition zu holen. Wird abends zurück sein. War ein guter Einfall von Wade, uns mit ein paar Kanonen auszustatten. Sein bester seit langem. Diese paar Juden werden sich ihren nächsten Überfall gründlich überlegen. <lacht> paar Juden! Was äh, schlafen die hinter sich her? Alle Menschen. Schafft die Kanone das? Schätze ja. Lassen wir es doch ankommen. Ja, Sir. Die Kanone darüber. Los! Direkt an die Barrikade. So. Ist gut. Okay. Richtet sie auf. 500 Yards ein. Good shot, Wilson. Load it up again. Danny, Joe, go after him. We'll cover you. Kaum mehr zu erkennen, er muss hier weit durch den Sand geschleift worden sein. Es ist Pat. Hey, dieser Indianer hier lebt noch. Moment mal, Jeffes. Das ist kein gewöhnlicher Paiute. Das ist Bear Dance. Winnermackers Sohn. Jones. Geh und sag Mr. Wade, wen wir hier gefangen haben. Ja, Sir. Nehmt ihn runter und fesselt ihn. Los, runter, stell dich nicht so an. Wann war dein Pferd das letzte Mal unterwegs? Gestern. Du brauchst gar kein Gesicht zu ziehen. Deins ist erst heute Nacht reingekommen. Da ist er ja. Hey, auf die Minute. Ja. Mach's gut. Ja, danke. Hey, Joe, pass auf, es wimmelt unterwegs von Pajuten. Keine Sorge! Was immer es auch ist, ich will es nicht hören. Du wirst es dir anhören. Es ist gerade eingetroffen aus Washington. <lacht> Sie haben unsere Postsubvention auf Eis gelegt. Und unsere Freunde in Washington halten es für höchst unwahrscheinlich, dass das Gesetz überhaupt noch in dieser Legislaturperiode beraten wird. Das ist doch unmöglich. Wir haben mit den Janern und Unwettern gekämpft. Wir haben unseren Postdienst aufrechterhalten. Die wissen doch genau, dass wir ohne diese Subvention den Pony Express nicht weiterführen können. Im Süden kursieren Sezessionsgerüchte. Der Kongress hat jetzt wichtigere Probleme. Und das ist mit den Geschichten, die du an alle Zeitungen verkaufen wolltest? Ach, weißt du, kein einziger Mensch interessiert sich noch für die Neuigkeiten von gestern. Dieser Bürgerkrieg liefert interessantere Überschriften. Ich lasse mich jetzt nicht mehr aufhalten. Dazu habe ich zu viel investiert. Okay. Aber dann muss etwas Spektakuläres geschehen. Es muss etwas sein, was das ganze Land in Erstaunen versetzt. Winnemaka. Ja, der alte Winnemaka. Er hat doch aus dir einen berühmten Mann gemacht. Vielleicht macht er dich sogar unsterblich. <lacht> Eigenartig. Wie sich die Lebensfäden zweier Menschen verknüpfen. Und wie soll ich das anstellen? Nun, du bist doch der alte Indianerkämpfer, oder? 
Oh. Ipod, habt ihr genug Haus? Das sind acht Fässer Pulver und 100 Kanonenkugeln. Das müsste reichen. Stimmt, genau. Danke. Ich hab dich vermisst, Haus. Ja, mir geht's genau super. Sonst alles in Ordnung? Mhm, ganz prima. Indian Wells ist jetzt eine Festung. Ich glaube nicht, dass Winner Maka noch mal angreift, wenn er rauskriegt, wie es da aussieht. Das Zeug hier wird eine Weile reichen. Ja. Hast du Joe gesehen? Ja, heute Morgen. Er ist nach Sacramento geritten. Paar, endlich auf dir Sorgen zu machen. Joe kann gut auf sich selbst aufpassen. Naja, ich versuch's mir ja auch immer wieder einzureden. Vielleicht schaffe ich es noch mal und glaub wirklich dran. Mr. Cartwright! Hoss! Ich würde langsam losfahren, sonst verpassen Sie noch das Spannendste. Das Spannendste? Mr. Wade und diese Presseleute sind eben losgefahren. Es gibt eine Hinrichtung. Was? Heute Morgen haben Sie in Indian Wells Wiener Magazon erwischt und jetzt wollen Sie ihn aufhängen. Ich würde gerne mitreiten, doch leider geht mein Dienst hier vor. Winnemakkas Überfälle haben uns behindert, aber sie haben den Pony Express nicht aufgehalten. Die rücksichtslosen Angriffe auf unsere Reiter haben uns in unserer Entschlossenheit nicht geschwächt, sondern gestärkt. Und heute, Gentlemen, werden diese Überfälle ein Ende finden. Der Pajutenhäuptling muss bis zum Sonnenuntergang die Leiche seines Sohnes bestatten oder er verliert sein Gesicht. Und das wird sein letzter Angriff sein, denn wir zwingen ihn jetzt offen anzugreifen. Und wie Sie sehen können, sind wir gut auf ihn vorbereitet. Wenn die Rechnung aufgeht, ist er der Held des Tages, was, Tali? Sie haben doch gehört, was Mr. Wade sagte. Es war das Versprechen eines aufrechten Mannes. Curtis Wade ist ein Gigant zu Pferde. Ich stelle Ihnen diesen Ausdruck zur Verfügung, Gentlemen. Pajuten! Bringt die Kanonenstellung. Es ist der ganze Stamm! Halt, halt, ruhig! Noch nicht feuern, das ist Little Joe!
Los, Kartreit, wir geben dir Deckung. Ich habe Winnermarker mein Wort gegeben, dass ich nicht fliehe. Du brauchst dein Wort nicht zu halten. Winnermarker ist bereit, uns auszutauschen. Mein Leben gegen das seines Sohnes. Wenn Sie einverstanden sind, wird er den Pony Express in Ruhe lassen und über Frieden verhandeln. Ich gebe dir eine Chance, Kartreit. Wir feuern aus allen Rohren. Ich will diesen Pajuten hängen. Haben Sie nicht verstanden? Winnemacker bietet Friedensverhandlungen an. Winnemacker versucht uns reinzulegen. So sieht's aus. Er will keinen Frieden. Er will seinen Sohn lebendig zurückbekommen. Fertig machen zum Feuern. Fertig machen zum Feuern. Denken Sie an meine Versprechen. Eine Hinrichtung und Winnemackers Ende. Jetzt ist es soweit. Boy. Lass die Züge los! Nein, das dürfen Sie nicht! Nein, Sie werden es nicht tun! Du bist genauso schlapp wie dein Vater! Es ist ein Trink. Er will keinen Frieden. Stimmt nicht. Sie wollen keinen Frieden. Er steht Ihrem Ehrgeiz im Wege. Alles kalt. Hier liegt ein alter Mann. Wirkt nicht gerade wie, wie ein Gigant zu Pferde. Was, Gentlemen? Schade. Wiedersehen, mach's gut, Tali. Gute Stories liegen ja auf der Straße. Gentlemen, warten Sie bitte. Jetzt bist du dran. Wirst du den Express weiterführen? Dumme Frage, Joe. <lacht> große Ideen und große Unternehmungen gehen nicht so schnell unter. Wenn sie auf großen Träumen und mit viel Mut errichtet wurden.
mister. Aren't you glad to see me? Well, mister, I'm glad to see somebody. Hey, Sonny, rust out of there, Sonny. Rust out. Name's Cartwright, Ponderosa Ranch. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Mr. Cartwright. I'm Jesse Pearson. Listen. Now, let's have a look at this. I'll tell you the last time I try a shortcut without testing it out first. I figure with, we can get the team off of your wagon, hitch him up with mine. We you gotta... really want me for something, Jesse? Oh, Sonny, this is Mr. Ben Cartwright, my partner, Sonny. Sonny? You know, Mr. Cartwright, I don't think we'll have to unhitch our team. Here, Sonny, come down here. That's it. Come along now. Now, you get right over there and get a good grip on it right there. Well, well you're, you're not going to have he, he, He'll try. Now, Sonny, slow and steady. Just lift it straight up. Anytime you're ready, Mr. Cartwright. Powerful young fellow, isn't he? Yes, he is. Amazing, amazing. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you. Is there something I can do for you, fellas? Can you give us something to eat? Uh, you'll have to forgive Sonny's directness, Mr. Cartwright, but it's hard to remember manners when one is hungry, and yeah, the truth of the matter is who uh, we are. Well, I'll tell you what you two fellas are going to do, you and Sonny. You're going to get in that wagon of yours, you're going to follow me right back to the Ponderosa. Because you're going to have supper with my sons and me, and you're going to have a fine supper, too. Well, that's mighty generous of you, Mr. Cartwright. Follow me. <laughs> right, oh, we'll be as close to you as your shadow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been making the rounds from ranch to ranch, looking for work. Wranglers, farm hands, odd jobs, uh, anything at all, you know. Well, you know, it's a pretty tough time of year to get any work. With Brandon over and harvest not for another couple of months. Sure ain't gonna be easy. Yes. Well, Sonny and I never let a temporary streak of hard luck get us down, do we, Sonny? That's right, Jesse. Uh, excuse me, are you two related? Well, uh, not in the flesh, Mr. Cartwright, but uh, certainly in spirit. We first met uh, some time back when we were both traveling with the carnival in the east. We sort of hit it off together, and, well, we've traveled like kinfolk ever since. Carnival, circuses, sideshows. Yes, we've seen every small town across this wide country of ours, haven't we, Sonny? Yeah. Jesse looks after me, and I look after Jesse. Yes, that's right. Uh, birds of a feather. Flock together. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that sounds like a pretty exciting life, though, traveling around like that. Yeah, very exciting. Yes, yeah, but, uh, well, we, we've decided that we've had enough of it. Uh, and, and we're going to go to Oregon, and we're going to live off salmon for the rest of our lives. Uh, just salmon? Well, Sonny became fascinated with salmon when I told him how they swim up waterfalls. I don't blame you, Sonny. It kind of fascinates me, too. Yeah, we didn't like the carnival anymore. And we're going to go up there, and we're going to live all by ourselves, just Jesse and me. 
And there ain't nobody that's gonna bother us no more. Why, well, I, I think it's time we spread up. Bedroll, Sonny, that is if Mr. Cartwright doesn't mind us camping on his place tonight. Well, not at all, but like I said, there's plenty of room inside. Uh, no thanks, we'd be much happier under the stars. So if you'll excuse us, we'll bid you all a fond good night and thank you again for a marvelous supper. Oh, you're more than welcome. Mr. Jesse? Can I thank him too? Why, certainly, Sonny. You go right ahead. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Good night, gentlemen. <laughs> Your hat, Sammy. Good night, now. Good night. We mortals live but for the day, and with bellies full and company good, let the morrow take care of itself. What is it the Persian says about life, Sonny? Unborn tomorrow. Dead yesterday. Good. Why fret about them while life be sweet today? What does that mean, Sonny? Well... That means that we, we don't bother ourselves about uh, what's gone and, and past. And we don't fret about what's going to happen in the future. Because we like it just fine with what we've got right now. Very good, Sonny. Very. <laughs> oh, he remembers everything I tell him. <laughs> well, you're giving some beautiful things to remember. Uh, thank hey, you. you boys have been pretty busy, haven't you? You didn't have to chop up all this wood. Well, your cook was kind enough to supply us with an early breakfast, and Sonny and I were just returning the favor. Well, that's awful nice of you. Morning. Joe? One of the hands just told me Dal Brightman's got a string of new horses over at his place. I thought he might need a couple of hands to help him around the stable. Well, we certainly could use the job. Well, I just want to let you know I got to get back to work. Take care. Thanks. Hey, yeah, that's an idea. It's an idea. Listen, I'm going into town a little while, do some banking. Why don't I take you two fellows along and introduce you to Darrell? Splendid. Uh, but um, would it uh, be all right if uh, Sonny waited here while you and I rode in? Jesse, can I go with you? I'm just going in to talk to the man about it, Sonny. That's all. Mr. Cartwright, uh, could... Um... Oh, horse! Horse, come on over here. <clears throat> um, oh, horse. Horse, is a beautiful day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a pretty day. It's a beautiful day for fishing, isn't it? Fishing? Yes. And Sonny loves to fish. Uh, would you mind taking him along? Mind? Of course he wouldn't mind. Oh. <laughs> Give me a chance to show old Sonny around a little bit, too, huh? Good. Jesse. Can I go with you? No, I'm only just going to talk to the man, Sonny. And you know, there's nothing I like better than fresh-caught trout. You suppose you could catch me a, a, a big one for lunch, Sonny? You bet I can, Jesse. I'll, I'll catch you the biggest old trout you ever did see. Good. Now, listen carefully, Sonny. While I'm gone, you do what horse tells you. You listen to him just like it was me telling you. Yeah, I understand? Sure, Jesse. Good. Uh, Jesse, how long are you gonna be gone? I'll be back before you even know I'm gone. <laughs> Come on, Sonny. Let's go keep them trout waiting. Let's go get the pole. all right. You know, in fact, the drover I bought him from, he was mighty glad to get shed of him. Well, that uh, Palomino does seem a bit antisocial, but, well, you can't judge a book by the cover. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'd like to do a favor for a friend of Ben's, but, well, the only work I got is wrecking these broncs. 
Tell you the truth, uh, you look a little light for the job. Well, Mr. Brightman, after all, it's not so much a matter of brawn as ability, and I've been around horses all my life. In fact, my mother used to say that I could whinny before I could talk. And by the time I was 16, I could ride a horse standing on my head. On your head? Yes. That's where you're liable to wind up, right there on your head. Well, uh, Mr. Brightman, after all, every man is entitled to a chance to prove himself, and that's what I'm asking for, that chance. <laughs> And you know, Mr. Brightman, the Constitution of these United States specifically says that all men are created equal and that each is endowed by his creator. All right. You're going to talk my leg off unless I see what you can do. Well, you go ahead. It's your neck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think I'll start by getting acquainted with that Palomino. See if his disposition matches the look in his eye. Oh. Yes. You've had a real good year, Ben. Yeah, not too bad. Expect to have an even better one next year. You know, that north pasture, where we've got it all cleared and fenced, and that means I'll be able to double my herd of feeders, uh, providing, of course, you approve the loan application. Well, you're a pretty fair risk, Ben. Sorry, busting in like this, boys, but uh, there's been an accident. Ben, is a fellow that you brought into Daryl to work in the stable? Oh, uh, excuse me. Clear him away. Clear him away. Give him some air. Oh, I'd back up and give the doc some room here. There's that big Palomino, Ben. He pawed and stomped him before he could even get a rope on him. It took five of us to pull him out of there. Who is he, Doc? No. Ben? It's his back, I'm afraid. I guess I... Finally took on a job that was too big for me. Take it easy, Jesse. Oh, Mr. Cartwright. I think I went and got myself killed. I can't. I can't leave Sonny. He, he needs me to take care of him. Uh, Jesse, you're going to be all right, you hear? Mr. Cartwright. Tell Sonny. Tell him. Tell him what, Jesse? Sonny, let's, let's go home. Yeah, maybe, maybe Jesse's back there waiting for me.
Sonny. 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 Jesse? Where's Jesse? Sonny. Sonny, listen to me. Now, listen very carefully. Jesse's dead. He's gone, Sonny. Gone? Oh, no. Uh, no, he wouldn't leave me. He ain't never left me alone. I ain't never been alone since I met Jesse. Sonny, you ain't alone now. Look, you, you take care of me and I'll, I'll try to take care of you, all right? Good, let's go. Come on. He was overcome with grief and shock, and he didn't know what he was doing. Now, Ben, I don't question that. But the fact is that he did cause Daryl Brightman a considerable loss. Well, I told... Now, I told Daryl that you agreed to stand good for the damages, and Daryl said he wouldn't press charges. Well? But I still feel that I've got to take Sonny into custody, that it ain't just safe leaving him running around loose. He's not running around loose. He's right here in the Ponderosa with us. That's because he's big and weak-minded. That's not a crime, you know. He'll be perfectly safe right here until we find someone who will take responsibility for him. And supposing you don't find nobody? I went through Jesse's things. I found that ticket. That must be the carnival that they worked at last fall. Well, it's at least a start, but, Ben, it's going to take a long time to run this down. Meanwhile, what kind of a guarantee do you have that Sonny ain't going to fly off the handle again and maybe cause the kind of damage that money can't pay for? Roy, he is not dangerous. He, he's a child. All right, Ben. I'll leave him here. And I hope you're right. Ben, I will do my best to track down this carnival outfit. I hope you have some luck, Roy. Cuss out loud. I better go on in there and talk to Sonny. What's the matter now? Dad Bernie Joe, I feel sorry for him, but confound it, I got my work to do, too. I know, I know, but he won't listen to me. All right, I'll talk to him. What you doing, Sonny? I have to go find Jesse. He's been gone so long, I... I just know something's happened to him. Ah, just hold on, man. Just hold your horses. Sonny, you remember what Jesse told you about me, I mean? About you listening to me just like it's him telling you? Remember? I remember. Yeah. Well, good. Because I'm telling you now, just like Jesse would, don't go running off nowhere. But Jesse might need me, Oz. No. No, he don't. I can tell you for sure he don't. But I can tell you for sure I do. I need your help right now, that wagon wheel out there. If I help you with it, then can I go? Well, we'll, we'll talk about it after a while. But right now, let's get on that wagon wheel. Maybe you can show me what I'm doing wrong. Come on. <laughs> Sunny sleep? Yeah. Did you have any luck with Roy Coffee trying to find that carnival? No, not yet. You have a rough time? It's so so. It's kind of rough keeping him busy, you know. Got him painting things that don't need to be painted and fixing things that don't need to be fixed. And even with it all, he ain't happy, Paul. It's like he ain't he ain't got a friend in the world. I know. I know. 
that it'll work out. I know it'll, it'll work out. You better get yourself some rest. Yeah. I reckon we all need a little. This whole yeah. thing's kind of been upset, ain't it? Good night. Good night, Alice. Jesse? Is, is that you, Jesse? Jesse, where are you? Jesse. Jesse, where are you, Jesse? 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 Jesse, where are you? Sonny. Something wrong? I heard Jesse's voice, but I can't find him. Well, Sonny, it, Jesse, Jesse's gone. He must have been dreaming. Oh, he was calling to me. Sonny, it's late. You better get back to sleep. I heard him just as plain as anything. It must have been a dream, like I said. Come on, lie down. You all right now? I'm not sleepy anymore. Well, it'll be, it'll be time to get up pretty soon. You gotta get some rest. I'm not sleepy. Well, I guess it's not going to sleep either. <sighs> when is Jesse coming back for me? Well, that's one of those uh, unborn tomorrows that uh, you and Jesse don't like to think about, is it? Sure is peaceful and quiet, isn't it? I can see now why you like to sleep out here. Jesse and me don't like to be cooped up. We want to see the stars. They sure are bright, aren't they? Sometimes I used to think that, that I could just reach up and touch him. Yeah. Feels as if we could almost do it, doesn't it? Yeah. Hey, Sonny. Did you, uh, did you sleep outside a lot when you were a little fella? Did your folks let you sleep out a lot? I can't remember. When you were a boy, uh, I know you, you liked to go fishing a lot. <laughs> uh, do you remember wading in bare feet and that cold crick? Feel that mud oozing up through your toes, huh? Did you ever see a salmon swim up a waterfall? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, well, that's uh, really something, isn't it? Sonny, don't you remember anything about your folks, a brother or a sister or a funny uncle, anybody? There was this funny man at the carnival, Scotty. He was a clown. He, he used to paint his face all different colors. And he'd dance around real crazy, falling and everything. And he used to take a penny and make it disappear right in front of your eyes. He was a funny man. He used to cough a lot. And he used to sometimes late at night cry. And he didn't know anybody else was awake in the tent. But I remember, I remember his crying. Jesse told me not to tell Scotty anything about it. And why would a clown cry at night? Well, 
Well, I don't know. I guess maybe because he had a reason to. I suppose every man does. Sometime in his life. You get yourself some rest now. Mr. Cartwright, would you read to me the way Jesse does? Then to the rolling heaven itself I cried, asking what lamp had destiny to guide her little children stumbling in the dark? A blind understanding, heaven replied. How's it going? Starving. Cheese over here, beef over here. Yeah, good. Save time. What's up? You didn't want to come in, boy. You ain't hungry or something. Well, he's got to eat. Get him in here. Well, Hoss said he didn't want to come in. He's not I coming. know what Hoss said. Now, come on, get him in. Well, you're really in a good mood today, aren't you? Oh. I shouldn't have yelled that way. I'm worried about Sonny. I'm real worried. I tell you, he, he knows, deep down, he knows that Jesse's dead, sure as I'm sitting here. But he just won't face up to it. When he does face up to it, I'll tell you one thing. It's the last time we take any strays into this house. I just... Hey, Paul. Sonny ain't out there. I looked all over. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. He ain't no place to be found. All right, let's start looking for him. That's no use, Pa. There's no telling where he might be by now. But he couldn't have gotten very far on foot. But we don't even know what direction he went in. No luck, huh? No. I went all the way up the head of Release Creek, then back down through Mesquite Canyon. No sign of him nowhere. Well, he could be in the woods on the other side of the creek. 
Well, if he did, it'll take more than three of us to find him. Yeah, we'd better tell Roy Coffee. Howdy, boy. Hi. Roy. I was just fixing to ride out your place. Oh? Ben, I got a telegraph from Marshall down in Arizona. Sonny is wanted for murder. What? That's right. It seems that just before they left the last carnival job, Jesse got into a kind of a hard set two with the boss roused about. Sonny waited in to help him before anybody could stop him. He broke the fellow's neck. So I have no other choice than to lock Sonny up and hold him for extradition. Well, Roy, you're gonna have to find him first. What? Sonny ran away this morning. Why'd you kill him? He didn't mean no harm. You shouldn't have done it. You reckon he's armed, Ben? No, I don't think so. Thought he is dangerous. Well, look, I, I figure we ought to... We ought to split up into three groups. It's a good idea. Uh, each one of us will go with, with a group. Uh, how about uh, you and Bill and you and myself? Fine. And if any of you men run into him alone, use your own judgment. Don't take no chances. We don't want to lose nobody. Yeah, well, try to talk him into giving himself up without a fight. Jesse. What did you call me? Is your name Jesse? No, it's Jamie. What's yours? Sonny. Have you been waiting? Nope. Fishing. Haven't caught nothing, though. Do you like to go wading? I let the mud ooze between your toes. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. Do you live around here? No. I, 
I got to go to Oregon. Did you ever see a salmon? Salmon? It's a fish. And it can swim up a waterfall. Aw, uh, you're just joshing. Oh, no, no, no. It, it really can. See, that's why I'm going to, to Oregon. I gotta see him. No luck, huh? Nothing. What about you? Well, let's try on down by the creek. Yeah, come right over here. Easy, my ribs busted. We ran into a giant of a man. Out of his mind. Tore into us like a bear. He grabbed old Ed up and flung him over there like he was a doll. streaks on it. Maybe it's gold. Maybe it's a diamond worth trillions of dollars. Can I have it? Sure. What's that? Somebody must be hunting. Well, what's wrong, Sonny? Do you have to go home? No, I have to go to Oregon. Do you want to go with me? Better not. I want you to go with me. I don't want to be alone. Gee, I don't think my mod let me. What you got there? Something. Something better than rocks and gold and everything else. Gee, could I see it, please? Nope. Not less than you say you'll go with me to Oregon. All right. I... I'll go with you. How far is it to Oregon, anyway? First, you gotta... you gotta promise. I promised to hope to kick a frog and die. Gee, a gun. A real gun. Come on, let's go. Sonny! There's lots of deer up here. Sonny, let me down. Let me down, Sonny. I better be getting home. My ma will worry if I don't. Hey, do you want to come to our house for supper? No, no, we got to go to Oregon, remember, Jesse? Don't call me that. 
up my name? Come on, Jesse. We got a long way to go. Stop, Sonny. That hurts. You all right, Jesse? Just a little ways farther, and, and we'll make camp up there, and we'll look at the stars. Jesse, you know the way. Please. All right. Just a little bit farther. Gosh, Sonny, I'm tired. Okay, Jesse. We'll rest. Any trace of them, Bill? Nothing. Well, it appears to me that we... Wait a minute. Well, look at you under. No tracks in them rocks. Sonny, my mom will skin me alive if I don't get home pretty soon. Read to me, Jesse. Read those pretty things that you always do. How many times do I got to tell you my name, ain't? Please. I don't read so good. Come on, Jesse, please. You think they're up there? That's Sheriff Coffey. Is he looking for you? Did you do something bad? No, I never. No. Yes, you did. You did something bad. And he's going to lock you up in jail. No, I never did, Jesse. I'm not, Jesse. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I just want to go home. Don't worry, Jesse. They're not going to get us. I won't let them get us. Jesse... Guns scare people. I'll scare them away. He's not even shooting at us, Pa. He's firing in the air. Yeah. They're still there. Jesse, they're still there. But he's got a gun, and the kid, too. I know. He doesn't know how to use that gun. Let's move up on him. Let go of me! Let go! No, Jesse, no. Don't leave me now, Jesse. It's, it's just over the hill, Jesse. I know it is. We can be there in time for sunset. Please, just, just a little ways longer, Jesse. Sonny? Jesse! Jesse, don't go! Stay away from me! Jesse's gone. But he wouldn't leave me for long. He'll come back and get me. And then we'll, we'll watch those old salmon flop. <laughs> and we'll lead the good life. Just like he always told me. Just like he always said.
Ben, take a boy into town, please. Come on, son. and you get the light stuff. Oh, brother, I figure you need the exercise. After all, you got a little weight problem. The only weight problem I got right now is in my two hands. <laughs> Morning, horse. Joe. Hey, how you doing? Morning, Bill. How's it going? Well, all right, I guess. Sure be glad when Sheriff Coffee gets back from St. Louis. Been nothing but trouble since he left here. <laughs> Town's coming to. Yeah, I heard it's getting sort of wild. Wild? I haven't had a decent night's sleep in two weeks. You need any help, Bill? No, that's what I'm getting paid for. Forty a month and meals. See you, boys. Hey, you think you ought to go on and give him a hand anyway? Yeah, Bill knows what he's doing. If he needs some help, he'll call us. Come on, let's get the rest of that hardware. I was afraid you were gonna say that. Yeah, right between the eyes. <laughs> Don't give us a drink, huh? <laughs> then you won't be needing these gloves. <laughs> and they won't be needing these head either, right? <laughs> Please, fellas. Hey, hey, it's time to give him a free ride like the other one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Out of this depth. We're just even in the score this squirt here for not giving us any drink. Huh? Yeah. They, they already had more than they could handle nah. when they came in. <laughs> Come on in, Pimmy. Well, you're gonna cool your heels in jail a while. You're under arrest, Dave. The rest of you fellows giving you a break. I tail on out of here. Now, what do you have to say about it, hmm? Yeah, old Depp. Why don't you wake up and we'll talk it all over, huh? Dave. He's dead. What do you mean he's dead? Hey, Depp. Hey, get up. Get up!
Ben. Josie. Mayor. Josie. You all alone? Where's everybody? Well, Deputy Hacker, he took uh, Haas and little Joe. They rode out about an hour ago trying to pick up the kid's trail. They got me from the stable to guard a prisoner here. Right. Listen, uh, uh, would you like to see him? Yeah. You know, I've seen quiet one, but this boy takes the prize. Hello, young fellow. Uh, I'm Ben Cartwright, and this is Mayor Garrett. We'd uh, like to talk to you for a minute. You better tell us where the rest of those boys are hiding. Leave me alone with him for a bit, will you? Cliff, I don't think you realize how much of a pickle you're in. You and your friends killed a man. You put an end to a human life. How do you think I feel, Mr. Cartwright? I ain't been able to think of anything else since. What about your friends? Think of them. How do they feel? Hunted like animals. What do you want from me? Why are you here anyway? I'd like you to tell me where your friends are. Now, look, I, I know that Dave Morrissey and Chuck Wilson are implicated with you. There were two other fellas. Where are they? I ain't telling you nothing, so get out of here and leave me alone. I'm told that you haven't any parents. Is that right? Sure, I'd like to help you. How, by turning me into a yellow-bellied tattletale? By getting me to sell out my friends? No, I'm not trying to get you to sell out your friends. I'm trying to get you to help your friends. Look at me. Look at me, Cliff. Now, I know that you fellas didn't deliberately go out to murder a man. I know that only one fella struck that blow. Well, the bartender told us that. So, uh, if you would tell us where the other fellas are, we, we could bring them in and... I could promise you a fair trial. Leave me alone. Now, Cliff... Leave me alone. I ain't gonna tell you anything. I ain't gonna tell anybody anything. What's happened? Who's been shot? Hurry up and get the doctor. Sit him down there. I'll get his leg up. Ben, come quick. Easy. Looks like it's broke, Mike. Sent Hoss from the dock. What happened? Well, Tom tried to talk those kids out of the rocks at Crown Canyon. They shot him and then scouted like a bunch of quail. I think I winged one of them, Ben. Them dang fool kids. Whenever you put on a badge, some young whippersnapper is bound to try and put a bullet in you. He's going to be out of commission for a while. Well, that does it. Beatings, robberies, hurrahing the town, and now this. Ben, I'm calling an emergency session to the city council, and I want you to be there. With Roy Coffee away, we need a new peace officer in this town, and I mean right now. The shooting of Deputy Hacker and the death of Deputy Harris dramatically demonstrate our problem. And so I say, if the only thing that sweeps clean is a new broom, then let us get that new broom and get it fast. And with Roy Coffey bogged down in St. Louis until that murder trial is over, Virginia City is in desperate need of a new law enforcement, the kind of law officer who can not only maintain order, but restore order. Now, I'm talking about lawmen like Bear River Tom Smitty, Wild Bill Hickok, and Wyatt Earp. I have just such a man in mind. And in exercising my power of office, I wired him to come to Virginia City to accept the post of sheriff. Well, who do you have in mind, Amos? You'll see his name on this message of acceptance. West Dunn. West Dunn, gentlemen. One of the great lawmen of the West. A man whose reputation for cleaning up bad towns has made him a living legend. I'm convinced he's the man we need. Hey, let's take a look at this. It says, West Dunn, the Beau Sabur of the West, the dauntless lawman. Beau what? Beau Sabur. French phrase, means a perfect swordsman. <laughs> a little melodramatic, but makes a good story. Hey, look over here. Look at this. Picture West Dunn with Wild Bill Hickok. Take a look at this, Pa. Hmm? 
It said these two men single-handedly cleared the trails from Dodge City to Abilene. Look at that. Hey, pause. Is this West Dunn really that tough? Well, that's, uh, that's what they say. <laughs> we'll find out when he gets here. I'm kind of anxious to meet him. I think Mayor Garrett's right. I think it's the kind of man we need around town. He's tough, aggressive. He shoots first and asks questions later. That's a strange way for you to be talking. Now, what's so strange about it? Tom Hacker and Bill Harris were friends of yours, weren't they? Well, of course, but... Well, what happened was regrettable, but you don't change your whole method of law enforcement because of one incident. Well, they tried to talk to the Morrissey bunch. Where'd it get them? Well, Joe, you... That's the risk they took when they decided to become peace officers. Well, for $40 a month in meals, I don't think they ought to have to take that risk. Well, they don't have to take it. They decided to. Well, I think they made the wrong decision then. He's pretty riled up, Amy. Yeah, well, the whole town's riled up. Yeah. Paul, what's, what's this West Dunn going to do about it? I don't know. It's going to be something. According to this, he's the toughest peace officer in the country. I so solemnly swear. Congratulations, Sheriff. How about a few words from our new sheriff, eh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not much for words, gentlemen. But I will tell you this. I came here to do a job, and to do it right, I must have the power. I will brook no interference, tolerate no undue criticism. I will do things my way, at my own pace, on my own grounds. The law is the law and will be upheld. I hope this is clear to everyone. Well, that's, that's well said, Sheriff. Uh, I think we've got ourselves a real lawman in Virginia City. <laughs> And I'm afraid I'm not much for ceremonies either, gentlemen. So I know you'll excuse me. I've got a lot to get started on. Oh, uh, uh, Sheriff Dunn, I'd like to have you meet one of our most distinguished citizens, Mr. Ben Cartwright, owner of the Ponderosa Ranch. Yes, I've heard a lot about you, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, we've heard a great deal about you too, Sheriff Dunn. Uh, my son, Hoss, my son, Joseph. Yeah, I reckon we know about everything there is to know about you, Sheriff. Little Joe must have read a half a hundred books about you. <laughs> Has he really? Yeah. yeah, well, sort of. I... I used to think about being a peace officer. Well, I'd better get some peace officer and done myself and start earning my keep around here. Well, we'll get out of your way. Congratulations. Good luck. Bye, fellas. Bye, so long, Mayor. So long, Mayor. Now, first things first, Mr. Mayor. I'll want a curfew for 9 o'clock beginning tonight. Curfew? That's what I'll need if you want me to do the job right. I want the riffraff off the streets and the citizens in their homes where they can't get hurt. Don't you think a curfew is a bit extreme? I mean, it's, it's not good for business. Extreme times call for extreme measures. I want that curfew, Mayor. Very well, Sheriff. I'll have an immediate resolution drawn up for review by the council. Mr. Mayor. As soon as I'm provisioned and ready, I'm going out to bring in the boys that killed your deputy. I won't have time to sit around while the council scratches its head. I want you to start exercising your mayoral powers and start backing me up. Yes, yes, of course. you heard I'm the new law here. Now come on over here where I can talk to you, fella. I ain't got nothing to tell you. <laughs> now I haven't got time to waste. I want the names of your friends. I want to know just where I can find them. All right. I'll do 
it any way you like. Cut yourself. Oh, there, little buddy. Oh, little buddy. Don't move, Hoss. You never saw me. Just get out of here. Chuck, I did see you. I saw you real good. Now, buddy, you're hurt. Come on. No, please, Hoss. You know me. I never meant to hurt anybody. Chuck, the only one you're hurting yourself now. Come on. Don't, Hoss. I ain't gonna go back there. I mean it. I don't want to hurt you. I don't think you're going to. mean to her. Hey, horse! Horse! Hey, horse! Boss! Hey, Kevin, he's strong, Ben. Same wound in a weaker man, he wouldn't have any chance at all. I want you to stay with him. The great danger now is from hemorrhaging. You'll be back in the morning, won't you? First thing. Take care of him now. Night, Ben. Little Joe. Night. Don't light the fire. I'm, I'm going to stay with Hoss. Right. Mr. Godright? Sorry if I startled you. I found the door open. I heard in town about your son. I rode out, thought maybe I could talk to him. I'm afraid you won't be able to. He's unconscious. I'm sorry to hear that. I better get to him. Mr. Cartwright. Maybe I can cheer you up a bit anyway. I think it was one of the Morrissey bunch that shot your son. Well, I caught up with one of them, a punk named Fred Roberts. You know him? Yes, I... He's the son of some old friends. I caught up with him at his mother's place. The fool tried to shoot it out with me. He lost. Are you saying he's dead? That's right. Oh, when your son regains consciousness, you'll let me know, won't you? Mr. Dunn. You sure that's a Morrissey bunch, huh? Pretty sure. I found some bloodstains leading away from where your brother was shot. 
So I guess Deputy Hacker was right. He must have clipped one of them. Well, I've got work to do. I'm going with you. No, I don't think so. Why not? You want him too badly. Your life will go off half-cocked. I can't take that chance. You're darn right I want him badly, mister. I got a brother lying upstairs with a bullet in him. I'm not going to sit around here and wait for the man who shot him to get away. Now, either I go with you or without you. It doesn't make any difference to me. You make up your mind. Get a rifle. I'll see you outside. Joe, I want you to get some power. What do you think you're going to do? I'm going with West End. I don't want you to go. Bob, I'm not going to argue with you about this. I said I don't want you to go. Look, when my brother Hoss wakes up, what do you think is going to mean more to him? Seeing me sitting by his bedside, I know, and I'm going out to find the man that bushwhacked him. Cartwright, you coming? We haven't got any time to waste. Joe. Yeah, Pa. Cartwright, you stay here. I'll go on in alone. I didn't come all this way to be left behind. Look, Cartwright, I brought you along so I'd have a gun in back of me. Not in front of me, not to the side of me, but in back of me. There's a side entrance there. Cover it, huh? All right, you're in charge.
keeping for his gun. Which one was he? It was Paul Curtis. We'll send somebody back to pick him up. We still got work to do. sitting there all night. He needs to sleep, Doc. How you feeling, Hoss? Well, he ain't gonna wrestle no bears this morning, but I am hungry. That's a good sign. Let's take a look at that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know. Huh. Am I gonna live? Not over 60 or 70 more years. Providing you keep out of the way of any more bullets thrown in your direction. Haas, you've got the constitution of a bull elephant. It's amazing. What's amazing? What's the matter? Your son. He's hungry. <sighs> That's good. What do you feel like having? Make it something light. Yeah, something light like a... T-bone steak about yay long and about yay thick. Like chicken broth. <laughs> well, I'll, uh, I'll have Hop Singh rest of something up. Oh, Ben. It was quite a stir in town this morning. West Dunn and Little Joe brought in another member of that bunch that killed Deputy Harris. Young Paul Curtis. Dunn killed him in a gunfight. What about Little Joe? Oh, he wasn't involved. Looks like Dunn setting himself up as judge, jury, and executioner, doesn't it? Sure does, doesn't it? Ben, I, I heard about Hoss. How is he? He's going to be all right. Come on in. Thank goodness. My prayers have been answered. I I fixed him a little something. Thank you. You enjoy that. Go sit down. Ben, I I had a selfish reason for coming here. I need some money. Anything I can do for you, you know that. We've been neighbors for a long time, and friends. First my husband. Now my son. It's been too much. I want to go to my sister in Ohio. I can understand how you feel. No, you don't, Ben. You don't know how I feel. When Freddy came home that night, he threw himself into my arms. He was crying like he was a, a little boy again. He told me how sorry he was and how afraid. We talked for a long time. I finally convinced him that he should give himself up. And then we heard that voice. Duns. Ordering him out of the house. If Fred had agreed to give himself up, why did he try to shoot it out with Sheriff Dunn? But he didn't, Ben! Dunn shot him down as soon as he opened the door! He never even gave Freddy a chance to give himself up! Horses fed and watered. They're outside. 
Why don't you go to the hotel and get some sleep? You've had a long night. I couldn't sleep anyway. I keep thinking about Paul Curtis. Listen, boy. Don't you waste your time worrying about it. That scum got just what he deserved. Look, Cartwright. You've got to understand criminals. Well, they look like us and talk like us. But they aren't, not by a long shot. They're a different breed altogether. Their minds work different, more like animals than humans. When you deal with them like I do, you learn in a hurry. No quarter asked, I'm given. Either you kill them or they kill you. It's as simple as that. I know these kids are not hardened criminals. They did was wrong, but they got scared. I just wish they could have had another chance, that's all. Did they give Harris a chance? Deputy Hacker? Your brother? Joe. Once, I made a mistake. I was deputy to a marshal named Ned Patterson. I was new to the job. Ned Patterson was the best lawman I ever knew. I loved that old man. Well, one night, I, I picked up this kid who was drunk and raising cane in town. You know that kid, he, he broke down. He cried. I, I let him go I felt sorry for him. Next night, that same kid shot Patterson in the back, killed him. I never forgot that mistake. Oh, would you mind taking that food into the prisoner, Joe? Cliff, brought you breakfast. Hey, Cliff? Just put it on the floor, Joe. Hey, what's the matter? Are you sick or something? Tried to escape. Jump me when I come in to question him. Ain't that right, boy? Yes. I, I tried to jump. I'm going out for a little while. When I get back, we've got work to do. Hey, you know, you really ought to try to eat something. Make you feel better. This beef stew's not the... Cliff, your face. I'll get you a doctor. Joe, listen to me. I got something I want to tell you. That guy, that sheriff, he's he's out to kill all of us. He ain't human. Joe, I, I know what we did was wrong. We ran because we were scared. And I'm I'm ready to face any punishment I deserve, even hanging. But it ain't right. Just killing us, is it? No, Cliff, it ain't right. The only reason I'm still alive is because he thinks I know where Chuck and Dave are hiding. Do you know where they are? I think so. But I wouldn't tell him no matter how much he beat me. I told him where Fred Roberts and Paul Curtis were. I killed them. Joe, listen to me. I, I want to tell you. Maybe if I tell you... Chuck and Dave will have a chance. There's a place we used to go to as kids. It's at the north end of a little lake. It's called Basin Lake. You know it? Yeah, I know where it is. Well, at the north end, it's kind of wooded. We always used to talk that if we got in trouble, we'd, we'd meet up there and, and head for Oregon. You think they're still there? We agreed to wait there for four days. 
If all of us didn't show up, then we'd move on. You take it easy, I'll get you a doc. Joe, find him before he does, promise me. I will. Amos, Mrs. Roberts said he murdered her son. Ben, you only have the word of an hysterical mother. Now, how do you think that's going to stand up in court against a man like Wes Dunn? Well, I think that's up to a jury to decide, isn't it? Look, you can't let him go around using that badge as a license to kill. What do you want me to do? Get rid of him. Get rid of him right now and forever. Turn the whole thing over to the prosecuting attorney. Oh, Joe, what's the matter? Wes Dunn's found out where Dave Morrissey and Chuck are hiding. I think he's gone up there to kill him. Mayor, you better get a doctor over the jail. Our Mr. Dunn just about beat Cliff to death. Well, does that satisfy you? Hold it, Jeff. Me. Where are they? Are they coming? No, they're not coming. They're dead. Dead? Fred and Paul. Fred's mother said he tried to give himself up, see? And just as he was coming out the door with his hands in the air, a new sheriff they brought in cut him down right where he was. Wes Dunn. Y you mean he won't let us give ourselves up? Chuck, that lawman is out to kill us. He's not out to take us in. Now, how's your leg? It's bad, Dave. Well, can you ride? can try. Well, you better be able to because we gotta run and we gotta keep running and running till we get all the way to Oregon. Now, come on. Somebody's coming. Something's gotten stirred up. Yeah, is it those two boys or is it West Dunn? There's only one way to find out.
Dunn didn't catch up with them here. Hey, Pot tracks. One of them's dragging a leg. They go up this way. One set of tracks here. One of them split up. One of them could have gone over the rocks. Yeah, one of them could be carried too. You want to split? Yeah. I think I better. I'll follow this track. Okay, okay. I'll take the rocks. Watch yourself. Mm -hmm. Behind, Dave. No, I, I ain't gonna leave it, Chuck. You ain't got a choice. This is it for me, Dave. This I'm at the end of my rope. Honest, Dave. Four days. Do it all over. Yeah, I know, I know. We can't, so forget it, will you? I'm scared. Yeah, well, so am I. Did you ever think of that? Chuck, you, uh, you got your gun, right? Yeah. I got it. I wish I'd never seen one of them things. I purely, honestly do, Mr. Cartwright. It's all over now, boy.
Drop the gun. Joe, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you right in the belly if you don't stay where you are. I told you to drop the gun. Joe, please don't make me shoot you. I'm telling you. Stay where you are. I'm giving you a choice. You drop that gun or I'll kill you right now. Joe. I swear to you, I'll kill you. All the way, on the ground. Joe, he, he tried to kill me. I, I didn't have any choice. I had to get him. I had to. Joe, don't you see? I'm telling you. I didn't have one choice. Don't you see that? There's a judge and jury waiting for you. Let's go. Since one whispers of love like a sweet red wine underneath the stars, we dance so slow. A melody of passion, only we know. Your eyes, they speak a silent embrace, a loss in this moment, a time and space, hand in hand through life's grand scheme. Our love, a melody like a beautiful dream. Hey 